I am so happy that our next speaker chose to be a part of Empower You. Like many of you, he has Parkinson's disease, and also like many of you, he is doing what he can to take control of Parkinson's disease rather than letting it take control of him. Tim Haig is a retired nurse for over 20 years, and he devotes his time to professional speaking, writing, and then as a founder of the Parkinson's Wellness Center, U-Turn Parkinson's. He is a co-founder of the Global Alliance, the PD Avengers. He is a published author of the best-selling book, Perseverance, The Seven Skills You Need to Survive, Thrive, and Accomplish More Than You Ever Imagined. He has spoken for TEDx and is sought after across North America for his motivational and inspiring topics, Live Your Best, and The Power of Perseverance. After having been diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's disease at the age of 46, Tim and his son went on to win The Amazing Race Canada, a reality TV show in Canada. And he is an outspoken and effective advocate on behalf of people living with Parkinson's disease around the world. Welcome, Mr. Haig. Hello, my name is Tim Haig Sr. I am the founder and executive director of U-Turn Parkinson's, a wellness center here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I am a retired nurse, an author, a speaker, and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2011 at the age of 46. I am also the winner of the first season of The Amazing Race Canada, and I'm a PD Avenger. Well, a number of years ago now, my son, Tim Jr. and I found ourselves in a Boston pizza restaurant surrounded by friends and family, our attentions glued to the giant television screens scattered around the restaurant. It was the sixth leg of a reality television show called The Amazing Race Canada. As uh, most people in the room that day were amazed that we were watching the sixth leg of the show because quite frankly, we had not run a stellar race thus far. In fact, we sucked. <laughs> like so many times throughout the race, we had once again lost our way and were coming in last for the second time. The obvious result being that we would be kicked off the show and sent home. Well, as we came to the end of that day, the crowd began to give us what I call the loser clap. It is that slow rhythmic clap that we reserve for those that we hold some respect, but nonetheless know are losers. Everybody knew that day that the Thames would be sent home. Well, some months back now, I wrote a blog on having passed my 10th anniversary with Parkinson's disease and some of the lessons that I have learned along the way. I'd like to share with you an excerpt from that blog. The number one reason I, the number one lesson that I've learned over these past 10 years is this, it's all about me. Contrary to what mom taught us, I believe that this conversation is indeed all about me. It's not about the next cure, it's about me. It's not about the next breakthrough, it is about me. It's not about the next great scientific marvel. In fact, it is about me. Now, this may seem like an odd way to start a discussion on the topic of Parkinson's, but I think you will come to see my point is correct and that you will agree with me in the end that it really is all about me. There are a few things that we can control when it comes to Parkinson's. We can't control that we have the disease. We can't control what it does to us. We can't, can, we can't just shake it off any time we please and set it aside. However, once we move beyond the acceptance of this initial reality, we discover that we do have control over the next and most important aspect of the disease. And that is we have control over how we choose to live with it. And this comes down to our attitudes. My movement disorder specialist played a critical role in shaping my attitude right from the outset. He said to me when he diagnosed me, he said, Tim, you're doing as well with this disease as you are because of how you've taken care of yourself. He followed that up with the statement, that the, if I could do anything, if I could do any one thing for my clients, my patients, it would be this. I would make them athletes. Those words motivated me and ulti ultimately led me to the con conclusion that our pursuit of wellness is the cornerstone in our quest to end Parkinson's. For you see, without a healthy community, there will be far, far too few to take part in research studies. Without a healthy community, there'll be far too few to advocate to raise funds and give leadership. Now I know that some of you are smiling, even smirking. I can hear your eyes roll in your head and I can even hear your thoughts. What, me, an athlete? 
Yes, you, an athlete. What is an athlete? Google the word and you will find a variety of definitions that encompass this thought. Someone who has been trained to compete generally in sports. Daily, you and I are in competition with Parkinson's. Will it let me walk today? Stand, write, type, think clearly, and on and on. We daily make decisions. How much can I push back? How much pain can I take? What will PD get today? What will I take back from Parkinson's today? Like an athlete, we surround ourselves with coaches, trainers, counselors, nutritionists, physicians, a broad team of specialists whose only goal is to get us across the finish line as champions. We set goals, we refine plans, we adjust routines, we adapt, we change, but we remain laser fo focused on the ultimate goal. We learn to do things that we've never done before, like sports. Many of my fellow athletes at U-Turn Parkinson's never exercised a day prior to being diagnosed. Now today they have made the mantra, exercise is medicine, a part of their DNA and daily prove their athleticism. They have changed who they are so that they might become who they want to be. To be clear, our pursuit is not purely in the physical realm. Like any world-class athlete, we control the way, we control what makes its way onto our daily calendars, we are continually learning and improving our knowledge of our competition and our game. We ensure that we surround ourselves with a community of family and friends who support us and, who, and, and we give special care to our emotional and spiritual well-being. In short, we continually train ourselves for the daily competition we wage with PD. We are indeed athletes. Parkinson's is our World Series, <clears throat> our Stanley Cup, our World Cup. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is our Super Bowl, and the trophy we are competing for is our very lives. As athletes in this context, we have the added bonus that not only is doping legal, it's encouraged. <laughs> now, to be a world-class world -class athlete, one necessarily needs to be narcissistic, self-centered, and inwardly focused. You have to look after your needs as an athlete if you ever hope to make a podium finish. As an athlete, we have committed to eating well and not just whatever we want. We have committed to responsible drinking, to controlling our calendars, and training when we should, when we should not just when we feel like it. As athletes, we have committed ourselves to goals, ideals, and a first place spot on a podium that will not be accomplished otherwise. Now, lest our analogy wane, let's consider what our real life goals, ideals, and podiums look like. Those goals look, are things like to retain relationships with our spouses, children, and friends, to stay in the workforce as long as possible, to live in our own homes for as long as we can, to maintain self-care as much as possible, to reduce dependence on medication where, where, we, where, where we can, to continue to travel, and many, many more things that are everyday life issues that we want to retain control of. These are just a few of the real life goals that we are training for. We long to be champions in the eyes of those we love. We long to hold the number one spot in the hearts of those who love us. This requires a dedicated pursuit of wellness, a dedication to become athletes in our own right. So you've never thought of yourself in these terms. I know that, where do we, but where do we go from here? What do we do now? Well, in its simplest form, Nike had it right, just do it. Now, okay, I see the stunned, dazed, glazed over eyes. I can see that you're thinking, he's serious. He wants me to be an athlete. <laughs> and yes, I do. But okay, just breathe with me for a moment, okay? Stop, relax, just breathe. You are not alone in this, and it is possible. We have all been told this so many times and for so long that I fear it had, we, some have slipped into a catatonic state of inaction. We have been bombarded with this side conversation of exercise that we don't quite know what to do with it. We've heard the statistics, we've sat, we've sat through research seminars and heard words like alpha synuclein and mitochondria. We've learned about the substantia nigra. We've seen the brain sliced and diced in ways previously unimagined. unimagined. We have been exposed to things since being diagnosed that high school biology class never even remotely prepared us for. And then someone will throw in the statement, and oh, you should be active. 
you should probably be doing some exercise. It's been proven to be the second most effective way to mitigate your symptoms and, and slow them down, if not outright stop the disease. So yeah, you should probably be active. What? What? We have one medication that is the gold standard for most of us and a second gold standard that has been proven to be effective. And it's almost always added on as an addendum that, oh yeah, you should be active. Well, at U-Turn Parkinson's, we don't do things that way. There is only one thing that I am interested in and that is do it, just do it. <clears throat> we are not in the lab pondering the latest research. We are not pouring over the latest, latest data set. We are in the gym, we are lacing up our runners, we are on our bikes, we are dancing, we are in the pool, we are singing. We are focused on our pursuit of wellness. We are focused on becoming PD athletes first and foremost. All right, all right. My medical advisory council and my general manager will probably threaten to take me out and shoot me again once they hear this. Because everything that we do is overseen by our medical advisory council of physicians and physiotherapists who specialize in Parkinson's disease. My general manager is currently doing her master's in applied health research. So do we do the, the hard part for me, the research side, all that jazz? Yes, we do. But what motivates me and what moves me is the just doing it part. Because at some point we've got to get out of the books, we've got to get away from the, the webinars and the, and the talk, even this, and go do it. Here is my point. I don't want to tell you to be active. I want to say to you, come with me, come with us, and we will help you change your life. We will help you in your pursuit of wellness. We will help you become a PD athlete. At U-Turn Parkinson's, we take a different approach. We just do it. We don't just talk about it. We don't just encourage you to go do it. We do it, we go do it, and encourage you to come with us. So what is it, so what is it we're doing? What are we encouraging you to do? What is this pursuit of wellness? What is wellness? Well, wellness is not just one particular thing. It is so much more than me running the Amazing Race Canada. It's more than just physical exercise. The definition that I like is, it is an active process through which people lead healthy lives in both body and mind. You immediately see that it is more than just physical exercise and that it is an all encompassing process. It is active, it's not just physical exercise, but it's holistic to the entire person, all that you need as an individual to live well with Parkinson's disease. It's taken from the National Wellness Institute and there are six areas of wellness that we focus on. One, number one, of course, is the physical, the care and the challenging of our physical bodies. And it comes down to that 150, it comes down to that 150 minutes a week 30 minutes a day of exercise where you go sweat a little bit. Now, is that a challenge to do? That's a challenge to do for all of us. But it starts by putting together a plan. Put together a plan, set, set some goals, and go for it. It doesn't have to be running a marathon. It doesn't have to be running a triathlon. It doesn't have to be running the amazing race. It's whatever you like to do that you will do that you need to go do and do it at a level that will cause you to sweat a little bit each day. So for me, you look at my schedule, my schedule that I should keep, and I, I'm, I'm human. Some weeks, yes, some weeks, no. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I have an hour of uh, routine of yoga that I do. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do um, Rock City Boxing through U-Turn Parkinson's. On Monday evenings, I try to go cycling with some buddies from U-Turn. On Saturdays, we have a cycling group that I try to, I try to make every week to go cycling with buddies. And then um, what have I missed? I think that's everything. So that's my routine. And for those of you who know me, you'll say, Tim, there's no running in there. There's no running in there. For a while back, Tim decided that running just simply wasn't any fun anymore. I wasn't enjoying it. It continually felt like, well, number one, it continually hurt. Everything hurt when I run. I never felt like I was getting better running. I come home from a run and would feel down and depressed. And I finally said, you know what? You don't have to do this. You can do something else. I've taken up cycling more and cycling I actually can go out and do and feel like I'm getting better at and have fun with. And it doesn't hurt the way that running did. So that's what I've done. I've made that shift. And we can do that. 
but it's so very important to make sure that you have a plan, that you have a, a, a solid plan every week that you walk through and that you can go back to over and over again to keep you encouraged because the science shows us it is fact that exercise slows the disease. It mitigates the symptoms. If you want to feel better with Parkinson's, become a PD athlete. And like I said, this will look different for all of us. Some of you are sitting in a wheelchair somewhere saying, I can't keep up to you. That's right. And you don't have to. What you have to do is what you can do. You don't have to do what I do. And I don't have to do what Jimmy Choi does. Thank God. <laughs> all you're responsible to do is what you can do. So if you've got a family member asking you to stand up three times a day, get out of your wheelchair and take three steps, then you need to get out of your chair every day and take three steps if that's where you're at. There is no shame, no, nothing wrong with that. It's acknowledging where you are at and doing what you can do. For me, it's about staying on that schedule. For Jimmy, it'll be something else. But each of us need to set in place a, a, a clear path that we want to walk every week that we can do that's manageable and do that. Do what you can do and that you love doing. So if it's swimming, running, cycling, simply going for a short walk down the hall today, whatever that is, do that. And then I want you to tune into to U-TurnParkinson's.org. <clears throat> I want you to look for our wellness center online. It's called Empower You. And I want you to look for our on-demand suite of videos because we are here for you 24-7, live and in person in Manitoba, live online every Friday at 10 o'clock with Coach um, Danielle or our on-demand video suite, suite of videos 24-7 whenever you need encouragement and a, a coach to help you get through your next exercise stent. U-TurnParkinson's.org 24-7 here to serve you, to help you live your best. So that's the physical aspect of wellness. And yes, it's a big one. It's important. So it's why we spend a lot of time on it, but it's the others are equally important. Occupational. That's a word that people say, occupational. What does that have to do with Parkinson's? I'm retired, or I've been retired for 20 years, or I'm whatever. It's more a concept of how we spend our days. How do we spend our time? What do we allow into our life? Is it positive? Is it encouraging? Is it feeding us? Is it encouraging us? Are we, are we then able to go out and encourage others because of the things that we do in our day? Or is it all a drag, a depressing? You need to pay attention to what you allow on your calendar every day. The intellectual, the challenging of our minds. I'm doing a very poor job of this right now, but I'm trying to learn some Spanish for Barcelona for the World Parkinson's Congress in 2023. Thank goodness it got pushed back because I need more time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to challenge the mind through that and then through reading and whatever you like to do, crossword puzzles, et cetera. Social, well, at U-Term, we... We have online support groups that you can be involved in from anywhere if you choose, but it's a, the idea of getting out, meeting new people, being socially stimulated, especially after COVID. COVID has been so hard on so many of us. We need to get out and find friends who understand us, who get us, who are going through similar things as us, and that we can, we can be stimulated by. And if you're interested in those support groups, you turn parkinsons.org. And of course, the spiritual answering the big questions in life. Who am I? Why am I here? Why did I get Parkinson's? Why did this happen to me? What can I do about it? Where do I go from here? And then finally, of course, the emotional, caring for our mental health. If you look at all six, all six of these, they spell the word poise. It has an extra S in it. Yes, I understand, but it spells the word poise. And the word poise means to be balanced. And a synonym for balanced is control. Isn't this exactly what we are looking for? Are we not looking for an equilibrium, a balance, some measure of control over our shaky lives? The pursuit of wellness offers you this opportunity. Do you want to find success within Parkinson's? Do you want to live well with this disease? Then commit to becoming an athlete. Commit to the pers pursuit of wellness. Allow me, allow you to Parkinson's to empower you in your pursuit of wellness. It's not only the best thing that you can do for yourself, but it's the best thing you can do for our community. So join me today. Check out U-Turn Parkinson's and come with us. And we will empower you in your pursuit of wellness. 
I'm often reminded of that little speech given on every plane prior to takeoff, where we are told in no uncertain terms that we are to be self-centered, narcissistic, and wholly inwardly focused. We are told that in the event of loss of pressure in the cabin, the oxygen mask will fall from the panels above. We are then told that we are to put our mask on first before helping that cute little kid see, seated there beside you. And why are we told to do this? Why is this important? They tell us this on every single flight you've ever taken. So why is that important? Because if you pass out from lack of oxygen, you are going to be no use to anyone and like, likely a bigger burden, especially to that little kid who's now trapped beside you. It is the same way in life. We need to take care of ourselves first. If we don't take care of ourselves, we're not gonna be in any position to help anybody else. So do you understand? Do you see now that this journey has to be all about me? Without the pursuit of wellness, without a commitment to becoming a PD athlete, Parkinson's wins. Without a healthy me, there really is nothing else. Without a healthy me, there is no advocacy work. Without a healthy me, there is no research trials. Without a healthy me, there really isn't much reason to care if a treatment or cure is found. For if a PD cure will not, for a PD cure will not fix a body that has been abandoned and uncared for. It just won't. What value is it if I wake up cured of PD only to find that it has already destroyed my relationships with my spouse, my partner, my children? We, do, we must choose to fight for our wellness today so that if we are ever to, if we are to ever meet the challenges of discovering a cure tomorrow, we must choose to fight for our wellness today if we were to ever meet the challenge of finding a cure tomorrow. If you don't make this all about you, we will not succeed in ending Parkinson's. We each have superpowers that we bring to the table, skills and abilities that are needed in conquering this disease. If you do not take care of yourself, we will at least be severely limited in our response and possibly outright unsuccessful. We are each needed in meeting the needs of our community so that we can end Parkinson's disease. So do you see that it really is all about me? Now, will you say it with me, please? Ready? It really is all about me. Okay, I didn't hear a thing. Did you? I, Okay, I'm not convinced that everyone out there is convinced yet. Some of you are still listening to that loser clap. That's my fear. Well, back to that story that we started with. As my son and I stood there in that Boston pizza being celebrated by the loser clap, no one in the room except us knew that it was a non-elimination leg, that we would not be sent home that day or any day that in fact, we went on to win the Amazing Race Canada and a half million dollars in cash and prizes, even after running a less than stellar race. You see, early in the race, we had decided to simply do our best, to live our best, to pursue our best, to persevere and to have the courage to be content. We had realized that we had certain, what should we call them, handicaps, that my Parkinson slowed us down and our inability to read a map. We got lost all the time. However, we knew what we needed to do. We knew that we needed to get up every day and simply do our best. And in the end, our best was good enough. It produced a championship. It's rock and roll, baby. Father and son, Tim and Tim Jr. You got it, Dad. Here we go. Started the race with the added challenge of Tim Sr.'s Parkinson's. That diagnosis doesn't have to define your life. This guy's my hero right here. I'm really proud of him. Yeah! Leg after leg, Tim Sr. pushed himself beyond anyone's expectations. You can do more than you think you can. You just have to be willing to try. Good fortune smiled on the Tim. This is a non-elimination round. No. Not once, but twice. You are still in this race. <laughs> more than anyone, the Tims know it's now or never. Five years from now, I won't have the physical capability to do this race. We have to win. Won't have yeah. a second shot. Talk to me. 
talk to me. Seven provinces, oh. three territories, 15 cities, and over 23,000 kilometers. And you are the first winners of the Amazing Race Canada. Tim Sr., Tim Jr., you guys have won two 2014 Corvette Sting Race, executive first class travel for a year from Air Canada to anywhere in the world, and a quarter of a million dollars. My dad has completely blown every expectation of him out of the water. Parkinson's isn't supposed to let you do half the things that he's done in this race. And he not only did them, he kicked their butt, man. Well, folks, that video never gets old. I always love watching it, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Today, Parkinson's is still clapping at us. It's saying, good job. You gave it a good try, boys, but you're losers. Well, I say that Parkinson's does not understand that this is a non-elimination leg, that we are still in this race, that our best will be good enough, and that together, that we together will U-turn Parkinson's disease. I invite you to pursue wellness. Join us at U-Turn Parkinson's and allow us to empower you in your pursuit of wellness. Because together, as we pursue wellness together, we will U-Turn PD. It's been a pleasure talking with you today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for inviting me to be with you today. Live your best, persevere, pursue wellness, and become a PD athlete.